Stuart was an oasis for my family, at a time when the alternative was serfdom, under autocratic rule. My ancestors arrived as many others did, for a fresh new start on this imperfect world. It seemed a fitting location for an imperfect people to forge a new beginning. They did exactly that over the course of many hundreds of years. Structures and technology were employed to create shelters from the ablative heat. Filtration systems tamed the plentiful oceans and provided an abundance of water. Though the atmosphere was breathable, plant species native to Stuart were only borderline in their nutritional value, so the early settlers had to supplement them with imported plants. There were countless stories of hardship and collapse, but the colonists as a whole thrived with air to breathe, water to drink, and plentiful food. My ancestors settled a piece of land on Angus, one of Stuart's major landmasses. It was hot, almost unbearably so, but with water from a nearby sea and our hab structures, we tamed the land and bent it to our will. A family that was destined for generational slavery under the control of others was now making their own way and contributing to making their community and the entire colony a success. The planet was so successful that it ended up becoming a minor political power as the exportation of water, food, minerals, and industrial products generated great wealth. Unfortunately for those who sought independence, it also created a tension and the predation of outside political interests. Stuart was eventually incorporated into the Free World's League in just a few weeks following a short military campaign. The fighting was light and not particularly notable, as the vast difference in power resulted in most units on Stuart surrendering immediately on the site of the Free World's League tanks and battle mechs. There was great concern over what being incorporated into the League might mean for the future of the planet, though as it turned out, Stuart would end up thriving over the course of the next 800 years. My family would thrive as well. The planet continued to develop its commercial and industrial might, and the people in general prospered. Even through the succession wars, Stuart seemed to avoid much of the destruction and instability of the prolonged conflicts between the major houses, and by 3067, the planet was home to 3.2 billion people, and produced a wide variety of export goods including battle mechs and key components of jump ship Kearney Fuchsia drives. However, just as before, success brought with it risk as outside powers sought to control Stuart and its destiny. For many years, the acolytes of the Word of Blake festered and built networks of influence in the Free Worlds League. Stuart was one of the planets where that ideology took hold and grew. After the Word of Blake seized Terra, that influence grew even faster, as many powerful families and companies on Stuart sought to maintain and improve trade connections with humanity's first planet. In June of 3070, the military and government of Stuart announced a break with the Free Worlds League and their intent to enter into the Word of Blake Protectorate. This move was generally supported by the populace, including my own family, who were zealous in their beliefs concerning Blake's vision for humanity. Over the course of the next few years, all that our family had built up over hundreds of years was squandered. Resources, machinery, food, and even my great-aunt were taken by Blakeists to help with their cause. Even before the Blakists were defeated on Stuart by Clan Novacat forces, our family was ruined. My grandfather worked as a laborer in an agricultural corporation just miles from what used to be our property. He never learned what had happened to his sister, though it's likely that she died in the fighting or was wiped out by the Novacats who didn't accept any surrender. My father was just a small child at the time, but he shared stories of the fear and instability that came from the six years within the Word of Blake Protectorate. It was a tough and humbling time for our family, as my father and his siblings often went without food on a planet that continued to produce an abundance of it for export. I was born in 3135, and my earliest memories of Stuart are through the lens of its control by Clan Wolf, which seized the planet in 3138 as part of the clan's expansion and eventual drive towards Terra. The 11th Wolf Garrison Cluster used Stuart as a primary station, and even though they lacked the resources of frontline clan troops, there were a significant number of clan elementals and various types of battle armor patrolling streets in the major cities. I remember once walking with my father by one of the towering genetic outliers as she passed heading in the opposite direction. I just looked up in awe, wondering how it took so long for the clans to get here 
if they were capable of creating such scientific marvels. Growing up hearing all these family stories, I was often confused by how different my life was in comparison to previous generations that benefited from free enterprise and being able to seek out your own path in life. I realize now that growing up within schools where the curriculum was designed by clan wolf scientists, my views were very likely impacted by that worldview. When I joined the paramilitary garrison, my father threatened to disown me. His hatred of clan wolf ran deep, often claiming that they exploited Stuart's weakness in the years following Word of Blake control and the subsequent wrestling of control by Clan Seafox and others. He used to say, Every time Stuart begins to rise from the ashes, a new oppressor will show up to grind it back down. I didn't understand, largely because my perspective was so dominated by clan ideology. I was on the wrong side of the lines when Gavin Stewart arrived with his forces in April of 3151. While I did not participate in the main fighting, I was there to see the remaining wolf forces abandon the planet. The garrison soldiers stood in silent shock as the wolf dropships rose on fiery plumes, leaving us to our fate. So while the streets of the major cities of Stewart celebrated, I sat in a locked barracks under guard. I handed over my rifle without it even having fired a single round. The Wolf Empire, the new Ill Clan, had abandoned us, and now, even though I was a child of Stuart, with a family lineage tracing back almost 800 years, I am considered a foreigner and a possible threat to my people. Did you renounce your allegiance to the clans? I am of Stuart, not Clan Wolf. My fate is tied to the fate of this planet, just as my family's was for countless generations. I seek only to go home and build something for my family. The wolves raised me and then abandoned me. How could I have any allegiance for them? Interview excerpt 21B7, James Abner, 3151, Stuart 4, Intersphere Audio History Project. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas to everybody who hears this. We just crossed the 3,000 subscriber mark on YouTube, and that's pretty amazing. The channel's recent growth has been such a wonderful Christmas gift for me, and I am very, very appreciative. I'm invigorated and excited for the possibilities for creative content in the new year. So stay warm, stay positive, and go make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow. <laughs>